Good morning, wherever you are in the world. I'm Graham Moore, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to this webinar this morning. I say this morning because it's 11 a.m. or just gone 11 a.m. in Dubai, which is where I live. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about exemplary leaders and how we create exemplary leaders in senior management. Now, to make this run a little bit smoother, I'm going to let my image go. You don't need to be looking at me. There's more important things happening today than you looking at me. You'll hear me. I'll still be here. But let me just get rid of that box and we can then focus on what we're here to do. So firstly, who is Graham Moore? Some of you may know, but I'm not going to make any assumptions about what you know of me, if anything at all. So... I've been doing this for 25 years, developing others, maybe a little bit longer than 25 years. I've actually conducted 3,000 training days. And it doesn't mean that I've been to 3,000 training days as a participant, but I have conducted 3,000 over now, 3,000 training days. I'm a certified master of the Leadership Challenge. Some of you may have heard of the Leadership Challenge. It's one of the most widely recognised leadership development programs globally. It's been around a long time. It's very effective, highly regarded, and I'm proud to be a certified master of the Leadership Challenge. I've actually delivered training in over 20 countries on four continents. South America is one that's missing. Any invitations would be gratefully received. But here's something else. You need to know that I am credible in what, for what I talk about. So here's one of the credibility factors, apart from being a certified master. At the age of 29, I had five direct reports and it varied between 60 and 80 staff. I've been doing this, leading people, a lot of people for quite a time. I was in that role for a number of years. Then I moved into learning and development, becoming a facilitator. But I've been there. I haven't just read a book about leadership and claimed to be an expert. The book that I have read, of course, is The Leadership Challenge along with many others. But I've done this. I come with experience. So who are we talking about when we say exemplary leaders at senior level? Who do we want to be exemplary at that level? Well, of course, it's managing directors, CEOs, general managers, CFOs, SVPs, CTOs, you name the acronym, I don't mind, directors even, all of those people. So what do we look for in the people at this level? Well, we need financial acuity. They need to be able to read balance sheets and P&As, absolutely. They need to understand where the money's coming from. They need to understand where it's going. They need to be able to read accounts very well. They need to have the ability to think strategically, yes, they need managing skills. Yes. Decisiveness. What else? Well, they're probably the main ones that people say we need to have at people at that level. There are some others which I'll come to in a moment. So what is exemplary? In the chat box, I want you to write one or two words to describe exemplary. And I'll just give you a little time to do that. And there we go. They started. Excellent is one. Yep. Very good is another one. Uh, inspiring. Yep. What else? Visionary. Yeah, that's part of it. Exemplary. Leading by example. Yes. Exemplary. We could write a whole lot of definitions, perhaps, about what is exemplary. One of the best. Exemplary. So why would you want to have exemplary leaders in senior management? Please write that into the chat box. Why do you want to have really good leaders? Ah, so that they know where we are going. Mm -hmm. So that we want to go with them. Yes. So that we want to achieve. Yeah. Great results is another one. Yep. Okay. So we could talk about this a little bit more, but let's move on. You can continue to add what you believe we would want to have, why we'd want to have exemplary leaders in senior management. So what do you look for at this level? What do you look for? Write one word. Vision, yes. What else? Decision making, yeah, that's two, but okay, what else? 
passion. Yep. Decisiveness. Okay. Leadership. That's what I'm looking at. Leadership. That's what we want at this level. So what do staff want in their leaders? So here are four characteristics of admired leaders. They want people want their leaders to be honest, inspiring, forward-looking, and competent. Now I didn't make these up. This comes from the Leadership Challenge. And Jim Coozes and Barry Posner, the authors of the Leadership Challenge, years ago set out to find what people wanted as the characteristics of their admired leaders. What do they want most? And you know that these four characteristics are the same four every year that they've done the survey since they started doing this 35 years ago. Of all the characteristics that we offer them, the choices of the top four are always these. We want our leaders to be honest, inspiring, forward-looking and competent. One factor rules personal credibility, performance, team cohesiveness, innovativeness, brand image, pretty much everything. So what is this one factor that rules all of that? Here it is. The truth is that trust rules. So this gets to honesty. The first of those characteristics, honesty and trust, go together. So you must exude trust. You must live trust all the time. People want to trust their leader. They want their leader to be honest. Leadership is personal. Do the people you know do the people you lead know who you are? what you care about, and why they ought to be following you, do they? Hmm. In order to become a leader, it's important that I first define my values and my principles. Absolutely. So what about values? How important are they? Very important. A good leader takes the time to know his or her team on a personal level. But to be a great leader, that means going one step further and they learn about each person's values, how they build trust, and what is core to their motivation and drive. Those who lead primarily from value-based motivations outperform those who lead with additional instrumental outcomes and rewards. And when I'm doing my workshops, I really push this value process really very heavily. I want people to identify what their values are and understand what those values are because they are drivers of your motivation. They imp impact on your behaviour. And people need to see that when you're talking about your values that you live your values, not just something you talk about, but you live your values every day. So what should leaders do? One of the important factors of leadership is leadership is a relationship. In the Leadership Challenge, we list this as one of the fundamentals. Leadership is a relationship. So how do you build relationships? Well, in simple terms, you talk. You get to know your staff, the people you're leading. I say this, do the leadership walk every day. Walk around the plant, walk around the office, walk around the area that you are looking after. Talk to the people that you're walking past. Ask them how they're going. Talk to them. Find out about them doing the leadership walk. You're not going out for any particular purpose to hurry someone up to do something. You're not on your way to a meeting in a hurry. You are walking, talking to the people you lead as you go. So here's another example that I learned many years ago. It's about a woman who shook 3,000 hands in three days. One of my colleagues in the certified master area told me the story some years ago. He said there was a woman who was part of the General Motors organisation and she was tasked to run a plant that was producing components for automobiles. And when the woman arrived in the first three days, she shook the hands of all the staff, 3,000 of them. Now, then she's not just going to line them up and walk past and shake hands. She's going to look at them in the eye, talk to them. And what she also did was to say, what can we do to improve things? How can we make changes? She got to know them. I'm here to help you. 
what can we do to make things better? And guess what? She turned around the fortunes and the success of that plant. My colleague, when he told me this story, said that he related this story to some gentlemen he was coaching as a group who were in a similar situation to what this woman was. And one of the gentlemen in this group said, I haven't got time to shake 3,000 hands. Guess what? They failed. They were not successful in that similar operation that they were in. This is important. Relationships are critical. So the last one I've got here is where a new HRD, Human Resource Director, said, Graham, can you help me? I've just been appointed to this new company in a new role as HR, HR Director. What should I do? By the way, this young lady had not been an HR Director before. What should I do? Here's what I said. I want you to shake 450 hands in the first three weeks. There were 450 staff in the organisation. And I'll give you three weeks to do that. Go out and see them. Don't just have a town hall. Don't just have them come to a meeting room. Go out, talk to them in their working space. And then I said, I want you to have the company buy you 500 birthday cards. I want you to write a handwritten birthday card to every person having a birthday. Why 500? Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that by the end of the year, they'll have 500 staff working for them because of the way she is going to be working with the staff who will want to stay there. So here, I want you to think now about the worst leader that you have ever worked with. Oh, my gosh. Memories, Graham. Horror memories. Oh, my gosh. What do I need to think about that worst leader I've ever worked with? But I want you to think about what percentage of your talent and energy did they bring out in you? This is your worst leader. What percentage of your talent did they bring out? Well, here's the next part. I want you now to think of the best leader you've ever worked with. Oh, yeah, I never wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. What percentage of your talent and energy did they bring out in you? So write that down. What do you think it is when we've surveyed people these same questions? Well, let me tell you. Talents utilised by leaders. People say that 31.2% of my talent is utilised by my worst leader, only 31.2. What about the best leader? 95.1%. Now, that is a case in itself for having best leaders or exemplary leaders. Quite clearly, we're going to get results. Let me give you another example of this. Exemplary leaders create a culture of change, excellence, pushing boundaries, and inspiring others. All of these leading to great results for the organisation. And they're not hard to achieve. They change their world and the world around them and beyond positively. They create strong engagement and commitment. People want to be there. They want to deliver the best results. So here's some other benefits of exemplary leadership. Productivity goes up. Engagement is increased, and we're going to have reduced absenteeism and reduced turnover. We're going to have an increase in innovation, and commitment will be strong. This is what happens. Exemplary leaders have a clearly defined vision of where we're going. They know where we're going, and they communicate that with the people they are leading. They have people excited about the journey that we are on. People clearly understand the vision and where it's going to take us all and how much of a part of that vision that they are. Because otherwise, if you don't know where you're going, why would I get on your bus? Why would I come with you if I don't know where we're going? And so many people don't know where they're going. So they are kind of living in drudgery. They're just doing their job without knowing anything about where we're going. Here's something else that exemplary leaders create. They challenge people. They encourage innovation. They encourage learning from mistakes. So what happens when you challenge people? Huh. Well, here's a couple of ways of doing it. I use these two statements very often, and I encourage you to do, to do the same. How often? Well, let's find out. How could we do it better? That's the question that leaders should be asking. Even though you've just had the most amazing result, 
how can we do it better? If you were to do it again tomorrow, what would you do differently? Always looking for a better way of doing things, the simple things, the complex things. Research shows that people, like the people who report to you, perform at their best when they are challenged, when they're given work challenges beyond their usual work tasks. So how much do they respond when, you, when they're challenged? How much? How many of them are? Here's the deal. 96% of people say they perform at their best when they're challenged, when they're giving, given something that's a little more difficult than the normal or the usual work that they're doing. 96%. Wow. Exemplary leaders ask, what's next? What's new? How can we do it better? How can we revolutionise this? So they're challenging people to think of better ways. They're challenging people to do things differently, to get better results. Exemplary leaders enable others. Absolutely. No micromanaging, thank you very much. They enable others to be at their best. Exemplary leadership is not imposing authority. It's not micromanaging. This is your ability to, and frequently, this is, exemplary leadership is not imposing authority. It's not micromanaging. This is about your ability to Exemplary leadership is not imposing authority. It's not micromanaging. This is your ability to, and the frequency that you, empower people. And that's not a good sentence. But it's all about how often and how effective you empower people. So what actions can you take to strengthen empowerment? Well, in the leadership challenge, we say give your power away. Give people a chance to do things they've never done before. Here's one line that I love, and I've heard a woman who does this regularly. When she sets the task for the people to do something, she'll say, what do you need from me for you to do that? Another gentleman I know who's a wonderful leader says, what's stopping you from achieving this? It's certainly not me. Yes, empower your people. Your people... Yes, the people you're leading are capable of far more than you and often they believe. So even this fish is able to jump from one fish bowl to another. When you give people that chance, they achieve amazing outcomes. Exemplary leaders give encouragement. Yeah, it's not just a pat on the shoulder, but that is important when it's done genuinely. It's not just a pat on the shoulder as you walk past someone, but you look at them might pat them on the shoulder and say, what you've just done or what I saw you do or that report that you delivered is one of the best I've seen from you. It's fantastic. What you've just done absolutely rep represents the values of this organisation. Whatever. Make sure it's genuine and meaningful. You don't need to encourage people. They know when they've done a good job. You know, I, this, this quote annoys me and I feel like I shouldn't keep using it. But I was in a situation many years ago when the state manager of this organisation, which no longer exists, was a global organisation. He said, when I was talking about encouraging people, he said these words, you don't need to encourage people. They know when they've done a good job. He's wrong. You do need to encourage people, even though they might know that they have done a good job. Why do I say that? Well, it's this. 98% of people say they perform at their best when they're given positive encouragement. Why wouldn't you do it? My God, why wouldn't you recognise what they've done? Why wouldn't you tell them what a great job they've done? Why wouldn't you tell others what a great job this person's done? Why wouldn't you give that recognition? Because 98% of people say, I'll do my best when I get that. Not hard to do. Here's some examples. Well, one anyway. Rachel Argerman, Australian lady, CEO of the TFE Hotels, wrote a handwritten note to every one of her 3,000 employees. It took her four straight days. And you know what? With those handwritten notes, as much as she could, she personalised it. 
Yes, she didn't just write to Adam, to Ali. Thank you very much. Where she could, she referred to the work that they were doing, the department that they were in, and how much that department or the work that they did contributed to the success of the organisation. Of course, it wasn't a long piece, but it was personal. And that hit the hearts of everybody who received it. Oh, boy, you've got to do these things. High, highest performing leaders are more open and caring. If you don't care about your staff, they're going to soon become very tired of that and will leave you. Express more affection. Demonstrate more passion as a leader. High performing leaders are more positive. They are more grateful and encouraging than low performers. You know, I know leaders who do the simple thing at the end of every day. They are standing near the door to where people are leaving and they'll say, thank you very much for what you did today. I know another leader who will walk around the room, say, thank you very much, have a good night. Appreciate what you did today. How hard is this to do it? And I had people say to me, I really value that simple thank you that I'm given. Yeah, doesn't hurt. People enjoy that. They know that they are being valued for what they do. So here's a little self-coaching action that I'm going to suggest for you. At the end of each day, record your answer to this question. What did I do today to improve so that I'm a better leader than I was yesterday? Just take five minutes of your day, the end of the day, write it down, write that question and think, what, what could I do to be a better leader? Perhaps in that meeting that I had, I could have listened a little more. Perhaps I could have recognised someone in the team that I hadn't recognised for a while. Just think of what you can do to be better tomorrow. Now, here's another question which I think is fairly important. How important is coaching for senior leaders? No, I don't need coaching. I did a course five years ago. I know all about leadership. Yes, I think it was part of my MBA, wasn't it, which I did 15 years ago. Oh, my gosh, I still get that. Leadership is learned every day. The best leaders learn to be better leaders every day. So how important is coaching? It is very important to help you become an even better leader, to help you reflect on what you have done that day, that week, since you last had a session with your coach. This is very important for leadership. So here's something else I want you to do. I want you to ask those who are following, me, following you, how does what I do affect your performance? That's it. I'll say that again. How does what I do affect your performance? Then you listen to what they say and learn. You might learn about a few things that you should change to get better results. So often we believe we know what we're doing the right way and we get it wrong. Talk to your people. When you've got that relationship with them, you can have this conversation and they will be honest and open with you. Okay, they're not, they know that you're not just wanting to say wonderful things to you. How does what I do affect your performance? Listen to what they have to say and learn. We need more exemplary leaders in senior management. There's no question. There is a need. Surveys show that consistently. Organisations say the number one need they have is leadership. Some years ago, a survey here in the Middle East indicated that 81% of companies said their biggest need, their number one need, was leadership. I keep saying leadership is not hard. When you know what to do, what I've shown you today, they're not hard. They are just things that you need to do frequently. You don't say that encouragement to the office party at the end of the year. No, you do it regularly. I run a, what I call exclusive senior executive leadership seminar plus coaching. So we do the seminar and then it follows up with coaching. I haven't got one scheduled at the moment, but I'm going to suggest that if you are interested in attending this one day exclusive senior executive leadership seminar plus follow-up coaching, I suggest you send me your details and I'll give you the, the details in a moment. This is where you will learn to become an even better leader. The coaching is there 
You can either have this within your organisation. Typically, though, this is for people who are from different organisations coming together to learn and then individually go through a coaching process with me as their executive leadership coach. So what are the details? Here we go. You can email us. You can email me, graham at moresuccessme.com. Or if you want more information, there's the website, moresuccessme.com.